Hello, my lovelies. How are you today? Going to talk to you about a dap. And not just any dap. We're talking some hippie love today. Not hippie love, hippie love. There's a difference. It's not free. <laughs> it's actually $1,999 of love. Um, hippie. All right. Mark Dos. Dos. Whoosh. I call it the coffin. That's what it comes in. Actually, it comes in a baller sleeve. Like, if you didn't know which model you bought, like, R8, 2. And then the coffin. Anyway, I'll spare you the entire unboxing. Let's just say there is a... Uh, it's a nice unboxing, actually. It's a good presentation. Well done, Hibby. Inside, you'll find one behemoth uh, digital audio player. A sweet case, which I'm going to talk about. In fact, let's jump right into this bad boy and talk about the Hibby R8 Mark II. Hibby's own take on an R2R DAP. And... They call it the Darwin MPA, multi-phase pulse width modulated array. Mm. Stainless steel body in three different colors. If you don't want the incredibly <laughs> fingerprint magnet shiny, well, I think they all are going to be R, but that's okay. Uh, stainless steel chrome, you can get it in blue and red as well. Now, one of the things that's really cool about this player is the Alcantara. Yes, I'm touching the case, not the actual player. The player itself, uh, to tell you the truth, I cleaned it and wrapped it back up. This is, and a big shout out and thank you to Hibby for this Canucks Audioholics Loner Tour unit and i already shot this video <clears throat> it was beautiful they were spectacular but it had 44 minutes of me talking well on the video at least my lips were moving but i didn't have any sound so i'm reshooting this video i'm not upset <clears throat> i'm in a really good mood actually because uh it's super easy to review stuff you love and not so easy and you put you into a foul mood KZ Symphony. Um, and, and I'm out of that funk, and I'm in a good funk uh, with this unit. So this is a smashing player. If you can't tell already, with my mood, I really like this player. A lot. Now, uh, it has that Alcantara. It, it is like, if you've never seen it before, it's like a fuzzy velvet um, and I used this uh, many, many, many moons ago as an Ankara Audio installer, and we'd actually use this as a finishing. And it's, and I can tell you quite honestly, if you're worried about the finish of this player with the Alcantara on the back, it won't wear off. Um, it doesn't get bald spots. You don't have that fear. So don't worry, your $2,000 player will look great uh, four years from today. Now, uh, the TPU case that comes with it also absolutely stand out. Now, I would show you um, what it looks like inside of the case, except for it holds it like a death grip. Man, oh man, when that, uh, it fits extremely snugly. Is that a word? Sure. Snug, snugly? Whatever. It also has the Alcantara, but not on the back, but on the sides where you're going to rip it and grip it, right? Um, uh, all the nice cutouts, that kind of stuff. Talking about the player itself. Um, so to, I was torn emotionally. <laughs> I'm not broken. Well, maybe, but I was torn emotionally on, uh, the player itself. So first one, we'll talk about the, um, size and weight. Um, here's my... 
Asterl and Kern Con Max. Here's a Hibby R8. It's considered a very large player. This is the X Duo XD05. It's about the same weight. Uh, and that was when I was torn. I was like, damn, this player is sweet, man. Does it feel like you bought a industrial piece of uh, hardware? And you did. And then my bipolarness goes, oh, Jesus, man, this thing is heavy. I don't know if I want to lug it around. And then the swing in the other way, I was like, yeah, you know what? For my 2000 bucks, feels like I got something from my money. And that is enough about that. <laughs> uh so the 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 big one, which is the the DAC chip itself, I'm not going to go into massive details, nor am I going to go to massive uh, in depth for the software. Uh, there's enough out there, and the Hibby software is mm, been out there a long time. But I am going to point out a couple things. If you've never used a Hibby DAP. Uh, or the hardware before I'm going to go over a couple things that I think are absolutely stand out. So um, that uh, house DAC chip that they developed inside of this thing has its own signature. And we'll talk about that as well. And I think that's more important than uh, the nitty gritty circuits uh, and uh, nobody... Well, a couple people will give a shit about, but uh, for the most part, let's talk about its sound, right? Let's do that. So, a uh, couple of things that I thought were interesting in this DAP, though, is, uh, and I've had this before in the R6 uh, Pro 2, is it has a Class A and a Class AB circuitry. Now, I have Class A Sumo power amps in my listening downstairs, and um, they get super toasty and warm. And I typically turn them off in the summer uh, when I'm not listening to them. I know you shouldn't, but I did. And I like leaving them warm uh, in the, or leaving them on in the winter because it heats up the room. So same thing here. It does heat up uh, a bit more. And if you put it on Class A and Turbo mode, you're going to get a bit of a heater. Um, now, that being said, I can't hear a difference between class A and class AB. Maybe some of you have better ears than me, but uh, same as the R6 Pro 2, I can't hear a difference. So leave it on A and B. A and B? AB. Uh, now the head amp uh, power supply is standard defaults to plus or minus six volts on the amp rails. But you switch this bad boy to turbo mode and it unlocks uh, plus or minus seven and a half Volts, so that's 25% more for you. Um, the Count Dracula would be impressed. Uh, now it does run hotter again, and you get 20% uh, less runtime. So why the hell would you hit turbo mode? Well, you can use that to use for hard to drive headphones, and we'll talk about that. And I'll give you some examples of what I used and my experience about its power because. One of the things that made me sell my R6 Pro 2 was the very short battery life. And um, yeah, so that was probably the big one for me um, where I, I could get through a listening session, but I had to charge it up right away. So this doesn't have that issue, by the way. So R6 Pro 2 users, mm, listen up. So... Um, the battery is massive. That is also accounting to why this thing is also very large and in charge. Uh, 12,000 milliamp hours. It's a big, big battery. Um, they're saying you get, um, on worst case scenario, um, on 4.4 balanced, you would get 11 and a half hours on class A mode that but again i never needed that at 4.4 balances where my most of my listening was done 18 hours of 
actual um, runtime on class A and 21 hours on class AB. And I can honestly tell you, because I thought it was a bit of a... Mm, on here it does you pull it up and it, you start it up and it says two days worth of uh, battery life remaining so i thought that was a bit of a overstatement um, but it actually isn't mm, this battery is a beast so um maybe one of best in class that's for sure some things that I, when I was going through all the marketing hoopla hoopla, uh, I came across something that was kind of interesting for me, uh, the pure copper battery frame. And I'm mentioning this because they say in their marketing hoopy hoopy that it keeps the R8 Mark II cool. And I will tell you that that is an absolute truth. Um, even with me driving it as hard as I possibly could, as loud as I could possibly take it kept its composure and really never even got warm um, so what they did inside and with the stainless steel chassis and that uh, copper battery frame works it does great heat dissipation which would translate to you and me as um, longevity when circuits dry out and get hot um, that's what causes failure so well done hippie something else i noticed that was standout was the super fast qualicum snapdragon 665 which basically means that when i'm mucking around when i'm trying to find share and i punch in ch and it hits h and it and I have to go back and then I hit uh, and then I use the Shanling M8 and it's better but then I pick up the Hibby R8 Mark II and it's lightning fast there's no delay and when I punch in share share comes up thank you Hibby so the processor works also for watching movies and uh, delay um, I will tell you that I watched Shrek, and it was epic. <laughs> um, there may have been a brownie involved, but I still thought it was pretty damn good and funny. Um, and um, I was using wireless on that time, so I was also using a wireless dongle, which i also talk later about this as well. And I didn't experience any lag. So you can watch movies on this bad boy as well. It's got a big screen. It's uh, very big. It's large. Um, 256 gigabytes of onboard memory. Oh my God, I can't tell you how refreshing that is. It really is. Because uh, it, um, I had a failed memory card, so I was down one memory card, and then as I was going to dump a few songs onto this, and... 1024 DS, DSD, which it plays. Um, I thought I would run out of room with onboard memory, and to my surprise, uh, because I don't really look at the specs, uh, I did after that. It was like, holy cow, 256 gigs of onboard memory, that's epic. And it really is, because it will allow you to put on a ton, a ton of uh, music on there especially not everything was going to be 1024 dsd but ton of flak files um onboard storage really nice touch very well done excellent job and another eight gigs for the operating system as i understand it so this player's got a bunch of well engineered thought processes and build into this bad boy the gorilla glass <laughs> I'm laughing because uh, <laughs> I take off the little thing when you open it and I peel it off. I'm the first one to get it in our group and I peel off the little protective layer that covers the screensaver, right? And as I'm playing with it, uh, my chicken wing grease covered fingers are getting stuff all over the place. And I had just finished reading about the uh, OL phobic. Sounds like something's afraid of something. Uh, coatings. And I, it's like, what the hell? It isn't. Uh, there's chicken grease all over this thing. 
on the screensaver, but the screen itself is Gorilla Glass 3 with that coating, but the screensaver that comes provided is not. Hibby, come on. Anyway, what I typically do anyway is I buy a Samsung S22 Ultra uh, matte screensaver, and I love that. Um, works great on here, by the way. So, is a 2160 by 1080 uh, screen res, which is that overkill? On a DAP, I think it is, but it played Shrek nicely. Um, now, uh, big feature that I'm a big fan of is HibiCast. Now, if you're not familiar with this, what it does, I'm looking for my phone again. I do this every time. Um, you think with this repeat video that I would have learned the first time, but I didn't. Anyway, so I'm looking for my phone to show you when I have a Hibby app installed on my phone, and I have Hibby, of course, on here on the player itself. I simply go, in fact, I will show you on my... I love this app so much that um, I install it on all my dApps. Right, it's on my Shandling as well. It's awesome software. Uh, the, and there's two differences um, that come into play here. So I'm going to show you on the Shandling. So there's a little thing up here with a little Hibby icon, and it says Hibby Link Controller, Hibby Link Server. And it is the only software. Shandling has one too. It doesn't work, it doesn't connect uh, every single time. The Hibby one seems to, whatever they did, seems to work every single time. And basically, it allows you to take two devices and control one while you're leaving the other one stationary, which is good because it'll be planted where you put it. Plug your headphones into this bad boy. Um, and while you're surfing on your phone, um, then you can, can control volume you can control favorites that kind of stuff playlist find all your searches from your other device and i think it's truly wonderful if you've never used that now one of the big differences between that and the onboard uh, system-wide hibby app so say for whatever reason you didn't like the hibby app and you wanted to put a, a different app on there trying to think of UAPP, whatever. Um, that's your favorite Android music player app. The system-wide Hibby stuff, like the MSEB and the parametric EQ, still works. Even it works as a system-wide one, regardless of what music player app you're using on your, uh, on your player. Speaking of system-wide architecture and those features, MSEB, Magic Sage 8 Ball, right? It, uh, I think like a black crystal ball when I say that word. But anyway, for you people who love to tweak, for you tweakers out there, uh, Hibby's got you covered better than anyone when it comes to the software and the uh, hardware component of doing the equalization. So you get three flavors. You get the Magic Sage 8-Ball. Get to that in a second. You've got system-wide PEQ functions that work for regardless of uh, what player app you're using. And uh, you have a regular EQ with a bunch of settings. So, But talking about the Magic Sage 8-Ball, so super awesome and the fact that your first slider right if you look at uh, that software and I, I gotta pull up a screen I tried to fix the uh, KZ Symphony to nothing it's gonna fix that anyway uh, the you got three levels of <laughs> adjustability when it comes to the Magic Sage 8 ball you've got your fine tuning you got your medium and then you got excessive uh, plus or minus 20, plus or minus 40, plus or minus 100. If you want to go bonkers, you can save it on uh, your memory card. You can save it on the player. You can save it in the cloud. Uh, 
Now the first slider I want to put attention to if you've never used it is uh, the overall, and this is the one I love the most, overall temperature. You can go from cool bright or you can go to warm dark. Uh, and then if you want to fine tune it more than that even, then you get into, and I'll pull up a little cheat sheet that tells you what these things control and this wasn't easy to find. Uh, base extension, base texture, note thickness, voice, female overtones, sibilance for low frequencies, sibilance for high frequencies, impulse response, and uh, air. And with all of that, uh, you can fine tune this anything to anything. So definitely worth mentioning. Standout feature of uh, Hibby's. Um, yeah. Again, good job, Hibby. And with this new update, actually, I'll talk about that too, because this was a really nice something I encountered. So I get this thing and I was totally expecting have to dig deep into the software because I knew there was a, an upgrade because Hibby actually announced it on Facebook and I love that. It's like, hey, our new software is out for the R8 too, blah, blah, blah. So I, lo and behold, hook up, uh, connect my Wi-Fi and automatically pops up saying, hey, there's an update. Would you like to download it? And like, yeah. And I did, and it was seamless. And it was a really nice touch uh, that I didn't have to dig deep into the menu systems to learn uh, how to upgrade it. So again, Hibby, you're on top of your game here. Um, some of the other things that I tested and I love is the wireless function. So um, with my ANK, with the Shanling even, I get some lag um, with that. This one supports not only um, uh, APTX, but also LDAC and UAT. Again, you're probably not familiar with that unless you've owned a Hibby device as well. This was um, Ultimate Audio Transmission, was a codec actually developed by Hibby. And um, I found this out when I was searching for wireless dongles. And I come across this uh, WU1, and that's what I chose as my wireless dongle adapter and um, for its standout features. Now, what is UAT? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked, actually. So UAT is... Um, a, a codec developed by Hibby, and it actually transmits about 20% more information over uh, than LDAC. It, it's, its sampling rates are higher. Um, and so you get, and I'll talk about performance uh, in a bit after this. Um, so next up, let's, um, before I get into some other things that I've, versus, like the uh, a and K Con Max and the Shanling M8. I would probably like to talk to you about its sound, because that is what the most important thing, other than functionality. Everything functions beautifully and it's smooth and it's fast and way you go. But how does it? Uh, how does it sound? Well, um, hold on for that. Actually, now. One of my critiques of the R6 Pro 2 was that uh, I wished it had a little bit more power and I wish it had better battery life. And I think both of those things were really addressed with the R8 uh, Mark II. It's got plenty of power. Um, on 4.4, 710 milliwatts uh, at 32 ohms. In the single-ended, you get 225. Is that enough to drive most? Well, it's enough to drive pretty much any IM, even the fat frequencies, no problem. Um, top that off with 
battery that lasts for days. Um, the system wide MSEP, PEQ, you get a pretty good guess of uh, its output power and let's talk about in that performance wise how did it translate down to uh, sound so um, I would describe this DAP in four words smooth organic analog what the hell was the fourth word <laughs> I didn't write the fourth word down Smooth, organic, analog. With that being said, if you're worried about its resolving power to bring out the smallest nuances and the details and resolution, fear not. It actually has um, some technical chops built into it none you worry my lovelies now bass is actually very articulate it's very textured there is no complaints in this department whatsoever not for me and I'm a bassy um, the whole unit in the mid-range for tonality wise does like a lot of the hibbies that I found and used I find it uh, slightly mid-forward. So vocals and instrumentals uh, tend to pop out more in the mix. So that really comes to play. If you had a very vocal forward uh, piece of gear, um, you would notice it doing double duty on this one for sure, right? So uh, just something to be aware of. You talk about the other top end though the, the the treble is very smooth it's very extended it's clean it's organic and again i'm going to use that word um as some comparisons to some of the other daps that i own now i recently picked up this astel and kern um can max i really love this dab it is super resolving very clean still musical but man can it it's very honest um, brutally honest and when you put um, an IM like the 64 audio velour on it it's, it's too much of a good thing it's uh, having a seriously resolving IM and a very resolving DAP doesn't always produce the best results and it certainly didn't for me and I'm certainly glad that I had this DAP here when listening to the 64 audio velours because I may have not been as gushing about that I am and I'll tell you something else when I started doing these three comparisons or four well, actually more than that comparisons to these sources it really hammered home the point of sources making such a massive difference in your impressions of what you're hearing and when I see reviews or I hear reviews or watch reviews and the person's not talking about the source that's a faux pas because uh, that really changes the sound signature of the what you're listening to. I mean, I think ear tips and sources um, can really shape what you hear. And if you're not talking about that, you're missing part of the conversation, a big part. So again, like the 64 audio velour that I was listening to, I was incredibly enamored with that I am. And a big part of that is with using this DAP and its sound signature and what it did to the special sauce to make that I am and me fall in love with it okay so overall the versus the Conmax the Hibby um, is more mids forward you can tell that um, but the con is uh, more resolving and the vocal clarity is there differently uh, it presents differently drier mm. 
the base is faster on the the con max uh and the stage is noticeably bigger but the r8 when i was listening to it and i was doing the ab song switch out switch out i wrote down r8 sounds like you just snuggled up on the couch with a big warm blankie and that's in a nutshell how this dap presented to me uh the r8 uh, bass has a very analog smoothness organic smoothness actually when i was looking back and thinking back on this player it actually that's the way it it is across the entire frequency range very old school analog vinyl and it's addictive it really is um versus the shanling m8 now now that's considered a warm dap as well or at least i thought it was uh the r8 is still warmer than the m8 but i think it's more musical um it's smoother it's lusher um it has an overall softer presentation again i'm going to use the more analog sound on the r8 um and I found myself um, pulled into its orbit um, and the way it uh, the way it sounds. I like the way it sounds. Uh, timber tonality though goes to the M8 for correctness, uh, in my opinion. Like vocals, instrumental sounded a touch, uh, and I'm being super critical here. Uh, a touch more natural um less colored you might say uh and i think the r8 though it really just trades the technicalities for musicality and for that trade-off that's something i'm willing to do uh absolutely off of the i didn't really try it off of uh, i did actually off of one i don't remember what it was in 3.5 single-ended but it wasn't an issue with power, so I moved on to 4.4, and I really wanted to put the grinds to this uh, DAP. So first up was the 300 ohm TGX gear Serratus. Uh, thank you, Jim, who makes these things uh, for this unit, and uh, I finally got around to listening to it, and the perfect device to listen to it on. Uh, was I uh, so this is 300 ohm resistance 102 dB sensitivity it's not exactly the easiest thing to drive uh, and those little buds really in my opinion uh, love some juice and boy did this player eat it up uh, it has enough juice even on low gain to get to my mm, this is enough volume level and then I put it on to medium gain and it was like okay that's more than more than enough <laughs> and just for shits and giggles i put it on high gain and then uh went one further and put it on turbo mode and i was like okay this is crazy that has enough power no problem and then to prove that point uh you can see in this pictures that it, i also tried my high Feynman he 400 eyes planar headphones uh 93 db not exactly very sensitive uh 35 ohms so it's kind of close to its rated output power at the 700 milliwatts and how did it do on that one well i went to medium gain on that one and easily drives it more than enough for me i think if you had something incredibly incredibly difficult to drive it might not go there but for everything I listened to, uh, it had more than enough headroom. So not only did it have great headroom, I noticed another thing about the Hibby R8 II that I thought was really, really a standout that I'm mentioning now. It's very dark background. It is very quiet player. You don't hear any hiss or you don't hear any of that. I thought it was truly standout, dark sounding by that I mean signal the noise. Well done, hit me. 
I am. I'll get to the Meyer Audio Slevo SLT6, 6BA that I, I absolutely adore. I think it's awesome. Um, that is a great sounding I am. And on the A and K, it does sound very nice. But there's certain times where it's a little bit, I found uh, on a lot of information up top and metal and stuff like that, uh, it was pushing my comfort zone where the Shanling didn't do it because the bit warmer, but man, oh man, the Hibby R8 uh, 2. And uh, next up, Zen's Mangered Up. Love that I am. It's my all time favorite. Um, what did the, the what did this player do for me? Well, I, I'm telling you, it it those two synergize well. <laughs> I wish this was my player. Those are my favorite IMs. I'm a little teary to have to send this off to the rest of the group and probably never see it again. But uh, those two together were now. The 64 audio velour. As I mentioned earlier, it's too much, too much, and too much from the ANK. But on the Hibby R8 was magical. Um, yeah, honestly, the, the the velour needs to be tamed, right? It needs to. Uh, be put in furry handcuffs and strapped down there's a couple of you that are probably going yeah 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 you're a freak anyway uh, this was wonderful those two together oh my okay enough gushing really that was a uh, but I'm gonna talk about one more <laughs> So I just got in this Letchure Cadenza 4. Now this thing is monitor like flat-ish. Um, I think Hibby, if you're watching this, you should pair up with Letchure and do some kind of bundle deal because this not crazily expensive hybrid I am and your player are yummy together they really are if you're buying one of these or if you're buying one of those IEMs that are you know one tenth the price of this player um, you might want to consider picking one or both up they're pretty amazing together this player overall it, what it really does is it has such a wonderful quality of just taming the beast like smoothing things out but not in a in a smothering way but in a organicness in a in a in a, in a warm blankie it really does uh, and it's addictive uh, makes you want to crave it fortnightly or more more daily even um, because of the way it just presents music and it's and it's uh, smooth, organic yet resolving, and um, it's just a, it's got a really wonderful sound signature. It really does. So to conclude, um, I wrote down some stuff. Even who should buy this app? Well. Anybody looking for a piece of serious kit, first of all. Um, someone who prioritizes musicality over micro nuances and loves to get emotional when listening to music. If that's you nodding your head, then put this one on your radar. Uh, vinyl lovers, hey, out there, right? Lovers of analog warmth of smoothness. 
Hibby R8 Mark II just saying. People who think that the R6 Mark II and the R6 Pro Mark II didn't have enough staying power, didn't have enough juice, and didn't have enough battery. Uh, all that is addressed and more in this player. Seriously nice dap. I thank Hibby for sending this around and gracing my ears uh, for lifting my soul and letting me listen to this wonderful player. Um, you know, from all of these sitting on my desk, right? Um, it would have a place. Absolutely. Um, and I would, and that's the beautiful thing about sources and how they can work with the rest of your gear, right? Um, when you're ready for something that's needing the hibby love, you give it the hibby love. Uh, when you need something to shove a red hot poker up your I am then a player that would do that but it has its place in the sound ecosystem of love and it uh it does a great job doing it this is a tone deaf monk um over now